everybody, welcome to NSC TV, your behind the scenes look at the National Sports Center. I'm your host, Scott Clayson, and as you can see, today we're outside the Schwann Super Rink, which is always hopping, and last weekend was no exception with the Walleye Chop Adult Hockey Tournament. Now this event we bill as the Stanley Cup of Adult Hockey, and you'll see why in a couple of minutes. But a couple of weekends ago, we had our very first outdoor soccer tournament of the season. It was the NSC Spring Cup, which had close to 250 teams. We were at that event as well, so let's take a look. Spring Cup has 32 divisions of U9 through U19 boys and girls teams. U9 and 10 teams are guaranteed four games, and the 11 through 19s are guaranteed three games. This has been our biggest Spring Cup to date. We had 250 teams. Um, the majority of teams hail from the five state region, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, North Dakota, and South Dakota. The teams that had to travel the farthest were from Thunder Bay, Ontario, as well as Nebraska. So in order to rank the teams into divisions, we assess all the teams based on their records, and then we also take a look at where they're from to make groups that are even within competitive level as well as where they are from, so they're getting a good experience with teams that they may not normally play. The NSC Spring Cup is the first tournament of the year for the National Sports Center and our first tournament outside, which is really exciting for us because we've been running programs all winter. Spring Cup is relatively new compared to our other tournaments. Um, we added it about six years ago and we now have kind of a bookend series of Spring and Fall Cup and I would say that those are my two favorite tournaments because it's a great way to start the season and a great way to end the season. Well, because we're in Minnesota, we of course have to talk about the weather. And for Spring Cup, we were lucky. It was a fantastic weekend to get outside and play soccer. Now, this past weekend as well, at Walleye Chop, the weather was fantastic for us, and that led to some epic tailgating, as you're gonna see as we take in all the sights and sounds of Walleye Chop, 2015. It's the 11th year of the tournament. It originally started as the Minnow Widows Weekend. It was supposed to be a women's tournament because we figured all the men would be out at fishing opener because it's held on fishing opener every year. But it never truly ran as a women's tournament. Um, the first year they ended up with twice the amount of men's team as the women's team and it's kind of maintained that level throughout its history at 34 women's teams and 84 men's teams. So we have since evolved into a 128 team tournament this, this past year. Five, four years, five years? Longer, I Me? think. But we, I, we've done the walleye chop for years and years. We actually won a few years ago when you gave out the little bobber grills. Yes. <laughs> yes. We have a bobber grill. It's high, it's high level, even at the at the bottom recreational levels, you've got college and high school players, so it's high level hockey, it's fun, but everyone's out to just have a good time. Plus you get the Canadians who come down and they make everything fun. Oh yes. <laughs> yes. And some Florida teams, yeah. Michigan teams, all over. Did I mention that we tied the Canadians today? Uh, yeah. We had teams this year representing two countries, um, in both Canadian and U.S., and we had teams from eight different states of the U.S. Um, Minnesota, Wisconsin, as far as Missouri, um, and Florida was the farthest this year. Well, this, this tournament is uh, it's, it's really catching on, and our guys love to be out here. Uh, and it's, it's been competitive, and uh, you know, this, I don't know, whatever it started, we were here. And uh, like I say, it's, it's fun to actually play a Canadian team, and there, it was a good, good, clean game, and it was a lot of fun. So, we, you know, we just love it. Well, our tournament wouldn't be the same without our, our t-shirts that our participant gives. We can't thank Coors Light enough for the free t-shirts that they put together for us. First year we've ever done apparel um, and apparel sales, so it was very nice to have that and Letterman on board with helping us out with that. Tournament Liquors over in Blaine always gives a great deal to all the participants here. Of course, Victory Links 
with their half off golf. I think we've had nothing but walleye choppers out there for most of the weekend. Every year one of the events that if we ever got rid of it, I think we would never hear the end of it is our minnow races. We can't run our minnow races without having a prize to give away and Grand Prix vending always gives us little trinkets and treasures. I can't imagine trying to go out and buy a canoe or find a canoe someplace without the help of a sponsor. So Blaine Gander Mountain really came through there. Buffalo Wild Wings uh, gave us all of our teams uh, the bag that they got to carry their shirts in as well as uh, a couple of raffle items. Tavern always comes in as a sponsor for us. Schwann's company is a longtime facility sponsor. They donated a signed Jared Spurgeon jersey, which was a hot commodity in the raffle. It's all about getting around, talking to other people. Well, actually, you're inside for one hour playing hockey, and then you're outside the entire day. This, this is the most fun weekend of the entire year. It really is. It's not so much the hockey on the ice as it is what happens off the ice. The tailgating, the bands that are here, the fish fry, all these things that are just little things that not any other tournament really has. I mean, some tournaments have elements of it, but maybe not all of it all at once. And the fact that we can host such a large tournament with so many teams, one facility, one weekend, is huge. You know, the whole thing is, it's a, the whole picture is that you, you go out and play, you sweat, you work hard, then you come out and you kind of relax and play hard. It, it's a whole, whole gamut here. So it's not just one piece. If I just had to play hockey, I don't think I'd enjoy it as much because yeah, I get all this stuff. Because, you know, we're doing the, you know, we're trying to get the tailgating award and I think we won, don't you think? About three years ago, we embrace the fact that people are going to tailgate at our facility. So three years ago, we held our first King of the Blacktop contest. The criteria for the King of the Blacktop trophy is food, atmosphere, games, and attendance. I look forward to having more competition with more groups and, and stuff involved. And quite honestly, as long as the weather holds out, it's it's not even about the competition, it's about having fun and everybody is enjoying themselves thoroughly out in our park. Yeah, so my birthday is usually the same day as Mother's Day and for my birthday present my kids let me come here to the walleye shop instead of, you know, brunch and presents and things. And this, this, is, this is a great Mother's Day, it really is. <laughs> Well, with a record number of teams in both NSC Spring Cup and Walleye Chop, it's safe to say that our summer season is off to a great start. And that is going to do it for this week's episode of NSC TV. As always, find us on our website, nscsports.org. I'm your host, Scott Clayson.